Hello, this is Paul from TheBetaLab.com. During the last couple of days, fake feminists have been causing problems in the Netherlands. A little background information. In the Netherlands there is a website called Geenstel, and Geenstel was founded in 2003, and five years later in 2008 they started a public broadcasting association called Pownet. And I believe that they usually have one episode of 45 minutes every week. And Geen Style is mostly aimed at young people and I think that on the one hand they are trying to be controversial and that they don't take themselves too seriously but on the other hand they are critical towards Islam and towards political correctness and I think that they are trying to create a counter-narrative against the dominant politically correct religion. And Geen Style is also responsible for creating some of the greatest interviews with some of the most important thinkers that are alive in the Netherlands and Belgium today. So as you might have noticed by watching some of my other videos the Dutch media landscape and basically the entire society are generally extremely dominated by political correctness to the degree that most people in the Netherlands can't even imagine a different worldview than a politically correct worldview. So politically correct journalists try to fight against Geen Stel. And as always they don't do that by producing rational arguments of why Geen Stel is wrong to for example speak out against political correctness or against Islam. Politically correct people never engage in a rational discussion with people outside of their religion. Instead, they use the power of social pressure. They make noise. They engage in selective outrage. They employ double standards. They label. So to attack Geen Stel, three so-called feminist journalists, who are members of the religion of political correctness, decided to play a little game. And this went as follows. The first journalist wrote a little article in which he complained about one of Geenstel's programs for young people. Humiliating women is big business for Geenstel. And she argued that Geenstel treats women as objects. So this is the program right here. You can either like or dislike this program. And this program is basically aimed towards young people. Mostly students. Looking at this scene right here, I would say that everyone is made fun of a little. Not just women. This TV show is a bit childish. But to say that women are humiliated is simply ridiculous. So the feminist journalist concluded her article with a little header in which she directly addressed some of the companies that advertise on the Gainstale website. Which advertisers enable this content? A few days after this, journalist number two jumped in and she published an article in which she complained about sexism by Gainstale, repeating some of the points made by journalist number one. And then journalist number three came in and published an article with the title Companies stop advertising on websites where women are virtually raped. Virtually raped. So making these type of program for young people is not just childish. It is even a form of rape. I do think that some of the content on the Gainstale website is a bit unnecessary in its tone. But they do have to fight back against a lot of highly dishonest politically correct journalists. Of which some happen to be female. The entire Dutch media landscape is basically a politically correct propaganda machine. So Geen Stel has a lot to fight against. And they sometimes do this by using dirty language, which I don't think in itself is necessary. But on the other hand, Geen Stel is single-handedly responsible for producing some of the most important interviews of the times that we live in, that are even available in the Dutch language. Such as the interviews with Wim van Rooy and Afshin Elion. So to say that Geen Stel rapes a female journalist by criticizing her dishonest work, is simply ridiculous. But exactly this is how politically correct journalists operate. They could have also started a rational discussion about the degree to which the content on the Geenstel website and these types of programs is indeed harmful to women in general. If Geenstel then would be unwilling to engage in a rational discussion and would truly cross the line at some point, they could have simply contacted the Dutch Association of Journalists to make an official complaint. But instead, these so-called feminist journalists chose to play this dirty game. And what's shocking is that it actually worked. Many of the advertisers decided to stop advertising on Geenstel, which will cost the company that owns Geenstel millions of euros. So this is the type of power that three so-called feminists have. And what strikes me the most is that even defense stopped advertising on the Geenstel website. This is the Dutch military. The Dutch military decided not to advertise on the website anymore as a result of some social pressure created by three so-called feminists. It is also very interesting to see how this victory against Geen Stel is currently being celebrated by many Dutch journalists. 
Geen Stijl is a website for sad people to express their frustrations. It is a website that spreads hatred and damages the fabric of our society. The fabric of our society. Anyway, this is how powerful political correctness is. Three so-called feminists can do this. And why do I say so-called feminists all the time? This is because these types of politically correct journalists are not really feminists. And this is very typical for politically correct individuals. They often make use of certain values, such as the freedom of expression or women's rights, to reach certain goals. But they don't really care about these values in and of themselves. If they actually did, they would talk about nothing else than what we see right here. Muslim male migrants sexually abusing European women. This is a problem that people caring about women's rights should actually spend their time fighting against. But these so-called feminist journalists complain about virtual rape, whatever that means. But they don't care about real rape. I mean seriously, let's look at two clips and find out which of the two is problematic. Where he is so angry, he rapes himself with a remote control. That's what's right? gonna. That's what's Actually, about to happen. Yeah. He's gonna grab it and then stick it up his butt. Yeah. You're, you're kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> there we go. Ah. <laughs> I give it five asses. So according to these three so-called feminists, the first clip is a huge problem. Even though this lady is voluntarily present in this show, this is a form of horrible oppression of women. None of the guys that are sitting around her are even touching her. But of course this is a horrible form of mistreatment of women. Even though from the outside she is smiling and having a great time. On the inside she must be experiencing unbearable suffering. But this? They have never written a single word about it. Not even a single word. Cultural relativism is a disaster, people. So here we have two pictures. Which of these two pictures contains the most feminists? The correct answer is picture number two. The last real feminist hero who ever set foot in the Netherlands is Ayaan Hirsi Ali. These three women are not feminists, they are PC theocrats, and there is difference between the two. A feminist and a PC theocrat are not the same thing. A feminist is an individual who cares about women's rights and acts accordingly. A PC theocrat is an individual who doesn't care about women's rights, but occasionally uses the concept of women's rights to shut down or damage people he or she doesn't agree with. These type of journalists are not feminists. They are PC theocrats who really want to be seen as feminists because it provides them with an identity that they can use as a basis from which they can attack people and an identity that they can use to fall back on whenever attacked by an opponent. Don't you know I'm a feminist? How dare you criticize me? You must be an anti-feminist. How dare you be anti-feminist? You must be a misogynist. If these women actually want to be feminist, they can. If you look at what's happening in the world and in Europe, there is actually a huge necessity for genuine feminist activists, because there actually is real suffering inflicted on women. So if these three women would actually care about women's rights, they would act accordingly. They could even contact Ayan Hirsi Ali to arrange a Skype interview to talk about the future of women's rights in Europe as a result of Muslim migration. Dear Mrs. Hirsi Ali, this is Rosanna Herzberger. I'm working for NRC Handelsblatt in the Netherlands. I love your work. I'm a feminist just like you. Do we have some time for a Skype interview to talk about the future of women's rights in Europe as a result of Muslim migration? Because I'm a feminist, I'm concerned about this and would like to hear your opinion about this. With kind regards, Rosanne Herzberger. Click send, get Ayan on Skype. She has expressed concerns related to the treatment of women in Europe as a result of Muslim migration before, and she's done Skype interviews before. So she would probably be very happy to talk to a genuine Dutch feminist about this topic. They could even talk about it in the Dutch language. And this would be so easy for any of these women to do, because they already have the audience. 
They already have the platform. These women are actually one single article away from becoming actual feminist heroes. They would only have to write one single article. But they don't do this because they're not feminists and they don't really care about women's rights. They are PC theocrats. They're on the wrong side of history. They have no real values. They are giving a bad reputation to the word feminist. They rely on group courage and the fact that they are surrounded with like-minded PC theocrats. They are underhanded cowards who target advertisers of a website that they don't like. This is Paul Nielsen from DebateTheLab.com. Never stop debating the left on Islam and take care.